Yeah. Because uh, first of all, I'm uh, very grateful for all of the council's help in acquiring uh, $60 million from the state legislature. As you know, it was not the slam dunk anywhere along the line uh, for many different reasons. And one of the major reasons, obviously, is the tight money situation for the state. However, the $60 million is going to be uh, quite a ways as far as where we can go. The most important thing, maybe I shouldn't say on priority, but for us it is for uh, a great concern. Otherwise, we would have to come before the council. As you know, we fortunately never had the necessity to come before you for emergency appropriations. Uh, any disaster of this size, I think if you look at all of the records dating back to whenever, uh, the civil defense organization or the mayor's office had to come before the council for uh, emergency uh, appropriations for ongoing expenses. And that was avoided primarily because of the state through Governor Ige uh, gave us uh, some money uh, throughout. In regards to the money we're talking about now, uh, specifically the $60 million that the council, as uh, some, of, some of you know, were very involved in going to the legislature to uh, present testimony in various committees to ensure that we get that. But that, is, uh, that is now appropriated to us, and as uh, Councilman said, uh, you know, in regards to monitoring, assurances was given by us that uh, monitoring is not a problem for us. Accountability is not a problem for us in any requirement of those funds, and we will do that. <clears throat> the first source of monies that we are going to use will be on the, completion, the starting and the completion of Highway 132. I was just told within a week, I guess this is Tuesday, this was yesterday, by Public Works that... Uh, Surveying, air surveying of the Highway 132 is completed, and we can start on ground surveying. Our goal on 132 of approximately, and I say approximately because uh, this is going to be uh, very rough as far as specifically what we run into, but uh, we est estimate that highway alone will cost us approximately $40 million, 37 to $40 million. Uh, we hope to to qualify for the federal government, uh, because this is a state highway, 100% reimbursement, uh, we have to be cashed down first. Uh, we have to complete this, and we hope to meet that deadline. We'll do everything to meet that 100% uh, requ uh, percentage uh, reimbursement. We have to finish by the first week of, of October. So our goal on Highway <coughs> 132 will be uh, this October, hopefully again the first week of October. The second uh, use of that money, uh, which we will not have 100% re uh, reimbursement, we hope to have at least 75% reimbursement, is uh, uh, what we call this Pohiki Road. Uh, Pohiki Road, as you know, is all of a county road. The reimbursement is, uh, I think, maximum 75%. Our estimate of that road will be approximately $30 million, and we hope to start that. Uh, surveying and those things as soon as we get un well on the way on Highway 132. In regards to the rest of the monies, including the $17 million, I mean $1.7 million, as you know, one of the biggest problems of uh, the monies and where we should be used is, I, I guess I could give this as a best example because of a conversation I was just, I was just having prior to uh, the doors opening here is a number of people that you find out that uh, on the beach road, uh, a couple of beach lots and vacation land, that the people are not really interested in any of the uh, specific type of housing program. These are people that uh, had a lot of them on percentage uh, were involved in short term rentals, and naturally, short term rentals uh, means that. Uh, facility homes that we're not living in. And in regards to the type of things that we thought would be forthcoming did not, and I'll give a simple answer to that. Let's take a pole beach lot and vacation land. They both accounted for approximately four to 500 of the uh, structures that were destroyed of the total. Of that, I would estimate 
at least 50% of that total were vacation rentals. And that's point one. Point number two, in trying to get data of who you are and what your needs are, uh, federal government in one of our uh, meetings with them and inquiry uh, changed from my time originally in regards to reimbursement by FEMA or eligibility by FEMA. We were told quite clearly by FEMA that uh, from here on in, not meaning just started now, but some time ago, I guess, no private entity or private subdivisions uh, will be eligible for any federal grants. In short, uh, we had to give the bad news to places like Kapoor Beach Lots and some members of Vacation Land, which were the two major subdivisions, that their organizations uh, would have to foot the bill, I think, except for probably some other loan program, but not through FEMA, 100% of the expenses of the roads, of the wa water or whatever, or private surveys or for their lots, et cetera. So you can see how this is really going to change the tone on what is going to be developed or pursued in those private areas. As far as the other type of programs are going to be pursued, it will be heavily dependent on what the surveys will show on what the needs of the residents are. So I'll be happy to answer any questions.